Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Que no despegue, mira uno, despegue. Rampa libre. No hay incendios en rampa. Rampa perfecta. Tema 20. Tema un minuto, mira uno, supersónico. Propulsión nominal. Aviónica nominal. 72, máxima presión dinámica. Miura 1, máxima presión dinámica. Seguimos, seguimos. Misión finalizada. As you can probably gather from that footage, Spain just accomplished something really special last night. While nobody was really paying attention, the news barely mentioned this event as it was creeping up on us. And then all of a sudden, Spain accomplished what no other launch provider has been able to do in Western Europe and changed everything in competitive space flight forever. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. Got a quick bulletin coming at you today. Wasn't planning to do another bulletin given all the content I released yesterday, but nevertheless, this is extremely important in my opinion. This is a momentous historic event and something that nobody was really expecting. I had been told about PLD space when I was in Pittsburgh. One of my viewers was very intent on seeing to it that I covered this particular organization, but time and again their launch kept getting it delayed and put off, and then I kind of lost track of them, to be honest. And then the ULA Amazon Kuiper launch came up, and I was covering that, and lost track, I am sad to say, of what happened with PLD Space. And what they did was truly amazing. The first ever vertical commercial launch from Western Europe. No other company has been able to achieve this. Skyrora came close. They launched. However, the rocket only got a few meters off the pad before it plunged into the North Sea. This one achieved a whole lot more. As a matter of fact, it achieved a greater altitude than Starship did on its maiden flight. And once again, this may not seem like a very big deal to a lot of you. It was a small rocket, only capable of carrying about 200 kilograms to orbit and on a suborbital trajectory. So actually, it wasn't even going to reach orbit no matter how well it did. But this is only the first in a series of rockets that are going to take Spain to the next level in competing for that all-important small sat market. Nobody was really expecting this, and now the Dark Horse has come in on the outside track and really put everybody else in their place. So who is PLD Space? Well, they were founded 12 years ago by Raul Torres, Raul Verdu, and Jose Martinez in a place called Elche, Spain. And I'm sure I'm going to butcher all of these pronunciations, so I apologize in advance. My daughter speaks fluent Castilian Spanish and would probably kill me if she knew that I was butchering words like this. But in any event, let's move on. Since 2014, the company's started testing a liquid-fueled engine, and the first time they actually did test it at the airport in Teruel was on July 1st of 2015. It was the first time that a liquid rocket engine had actually been tested in Spain, and the first time a private company in Europe had tested a liquid rocket engine on its own facilities. This company has actually set a bunch of firsts. Now, the company's flagship rocket engine is the Teprel B, which runs runs off of liquid oxygen and Jet A1, an aviation fuel. However, the upgraded version of the Teprel, the Teprel C, is going to run off of liquid oxygen and RP1, like lots of rocket engines, with a maximum thrust of about 43,000 pounds at sea level. That's 190 kilonewtons. That's going to be used in a rocket called the Miura 5, which is much bigger than the rocket they launched last night. Oh, and by the way, it's also partially reusable, which means the engines are reusable as well. 
Now, like most European launch providers, this company has accomplished a whole lot with a very small amount of money. They've only raised approximately $50 million or so since they began operations, and they only have about 80 employees. So, once again, about 5% of the funds that Blue Origin gets every year. And yet, last night, with that paltry funding, this company managed to launch a rocket with similar capabilities to the new Shepard. Granted, it can't carry the same type of payload, but it's supposed to reach a suborbital flight apogee of about 150 kilometers, maintain a standard flight duration of 12 minutes, carry 100 kilograms up to a suborbital trajectory, and then four hours to recover the payload after the flight. It also has a low acceleration. And what this means is that the payloads will be subjected to a lot less G-forces than they would under other circumstances with other launch providers. However, what happened last night was quite an accomplishment. Sure, it didn't quite achieve the altitude that it was designed to, about 47 kilometers, which once again was several kilometers higher than Starship managed to get on its maiden flight. And then once it reaches the apogee of its trajectory, Trajectory, it's designed to come back down after putting its payload through several minutes worth of microgravity, deploy drogue parachutes, and then main chutes at a height of about three kilometers, and then finally a splashdown, meaning that you can recover your payloads and your experiments afterwards at a very, very low cost, by the way. But if that doesn't sound terribly exciting, well, hang on, because things are about to change in a big way. We need to have a look at the Mira 5, which is going to have a lot more capability than the Mira 1. In fact, a lot more capability than the Rocket Lab Electron. We're talking 900 kilograms up to low Earth orbit, 450 kilograms up to sun synchronous orbit. We're looking at five Teprel C engines, so the upgraded Teprel engine, and five of them instead of one, with a total thrust of 210,000 pounds or 950 kilonewtons. And it has a second stage powered by a single Teprel C vacuum engine with approximately 50 kilonewtons. And on top of that, you also have a kick stage that will provide even more thrust and more payload capability. But it goes even further than that, because the Spanish have decided why wait on reusability? Why say that we're going to develop it someday, but we're not sure if it's really cost effective for micro launchers? No, we're going to go ahead and embrace reusability right off the bat. And as a result, in October of 2016, ESA chose PLD Space as the main contractor for the LPSR, or Liquid Propulsion Stage Recovery Program, as part of ESA future launchers preparatory program and they gave them a budget of only 750,000 euros to develop this thing and by the way PLD intends to launch this rocket both from Guyana making use of the Ariane Spas facilities there but in addition to that they have a second launch facility planned for the Canary Islands close to Tenerife can I go watch one of those launches please in the meantime, however, it's looking very promising for this company and what they may be able to accomplish here in the very near future. They're planning to launch the Mira 5 in 2024. Once again, like so many other European launch providers, this company is setting very, very high goals for themselves with very, very tiny amounts of funding. It's quite remarkable. However, given their accomplishment last night, I have a feeling that more funding funding should be forthcoming here very, very soon. So, again, against all expectations and really out of the shadows where nobody was expecting them, and maybe that's just because journalists like me weren't paying enough attention at the time, this company has come out of nowhere to accomplish something that no other European launch provider has been able to do. Hell, no American launch provider has been able to do this from Western Europe either. They're not even close to it at the moment. So, really, this company, PLD 
space, little bitty PLD space with their paltry $50 million has taken a lead on everybody in Western Europe and put everybody else on notice. Thanks very much for watching. By the way, I'm going to be traveling to Ireland very soon. I'm hoping to carry out an actual tour event there if I can make enough time and get a little bit of funding for it. If you'd like to support that, well, all of the details are in the description. One way or another, I'll definitely be coming to Ireland to do a tour event. I would just love to be able to do it here in the near future while I'm helping out the National Space Center with a very important fundraising initiative. Also, please subscribe, please like this video, and as always, stay angry about space.